For this example, what we're going to do is learn how to determine the minimum width of exit stairs for this floor plan. Now, don't forget from what you saw in the lecture videos, what we've done in class, also what's linked for you in the course notes, figuring out the exit width is based on recognizing, pardon me, being able to answer the question. Is it an exit or not? Make sense? Don't forget about that because it's super important, right? Because the word exit is in here, that means we have to use specific portions of the Ontario Building Code, which are different if the word exit were not in there. Okay, we're going to do this question uh, based on the information that we have here. This is a, let's see, a five-story office building where the stair risers are 190 millimeters. So that means that the vertical dimension of these steps are 190 millimeters. And we're going to do it based on six steps. These six steps right here. I completely made up these six steps. It's just a convenient way that I find to answer these kinds of questions. You'll come up with your own method once you practice this often enough. Uh, maybe even a different number of steps, more or less, as long as you show all your work and make sure that you identify all the relevant portions of the Ontario Building Code. So let's start with step number one, which is identifying whether or not this building is a part three building or a part nine building. Because knowing that tells us whether we start with part three of the Ontario Building Code or part nine of the Ontario Building Code. To do this based on topic three, we are now going to try to make sure, we're going to pretend, or pardon me, we're going to try to prove that this building is a part nine building. And that's based on these three conditions, according to the contents of sentence 1.3.3.31 under Division A of the Ontario Building Code. If even one of those three conditions fails, automatically this is a part three building. So let's take them in whatever order I have them shown on the side there. The first one is to show that the building has to be no more than three stories. Our building, hey, look at this, it's five stories. So automatically this fails. Automatically, I don't have to even look at the other two conditions. This tells me it's not a part nine building and instead is a part three building. Great. Now that we know this, we know that we're going to get all of our information for part three of the Ontario Building Code. We can move on to step number two. So for step number two, what we have to try to figure out is the major occupancy for this building, or at least for this floor space, which is based on topic number two, if you remember that. And we get that information for this course because it's an introductory course and we're learning. We have to start first, my recommendation, is to start first with Appendix A, okay? Because this has the list of all the types of buildings. And then once we find our building under Appendix A, then we're gonna go to Table 3.1.2.1 and that will give us the name of that major occupancy. Well, this is a building that's identified as an office building. And from our references right here, we find that that's a D major occupancy. Great. We can now move on to step number three. On step number three, now that we know this is a D major occupancy and we're using part three, we now have to figure out the occupant load for this floor area. Okay, that's from topic number four. The occupant load, if you remember, is based on this formula that I'm showing over here. It's the ratio between the area of this floor, the floor area, and a factor that is obtained from table 3.1.17.1. The area of the floor is 130 meters squared, right? I just got it by multiplying the length and the width of the floor. 10 meters by 13 meters. And the factor from table 3.1.17.1 for this space is 9.3 meters squared per person. So I just went to this table and I looked for office. Okay, that, that's all I did. Uh, under D major occupancy. So that's business and personal services. 
okay? 9.3 meters squared per person. So when I divide these two numbers, I get 14 people, okay? So I take th those two numbers, I divide them by each other, and I round up, right? Because people are whole numbers. So for each exit, because we have two exits, what's going to happen is the assumption is that these folks, half of them go to one exit, half of them go to the other exit. So for each exit, we get seven people. Great. Now that we've figured out the occupant load for this space, for each exit, we can move on to step number four, which is figuring out the width of the exit stairs so that one person can get through. Great. So the because this is a D major occupancy, and from the information that you get from the course notes and the lecture video, the correct portion of the Ontario Building Code to get this information from is sentence 3.4.3.28 under Division B, which then takes you to table 3.4.3.2a. So what this table tells us is that for D major occupancies, for stairs, the minimum width for exit stairs is 1,100 millimeters. Great. We can now move on to step number five to figure out the width of each exit stairs to account for all people. That is the occupant load that we got under step three. So under step number five, I know it's a little busy, but follow along. You've got this. Okay. We're going to get, we're going to use the occupant load. So that is the seven people that we got from step number three. We already identified what the minimum width is for one person. And the appropriate portion of the Ontario Building Code where we get this relevant information is uh, Clause 3.4.3.21c under Division B of the Ontario Building Code. You got that information from the lecture video and the course notes that are attached to them. Okay, And what that information says is that for stairs that have a riser of 190 millimeters, okay, exit stairs with that dimension, you must use a factor of 9.2 millimeters per person. So to figure out the minimum width for each exit stairs, we take the number of people for each exit, multiply it by the factor for each exit for each one of those people, and then we get a number. So when I multiply those two numbers uh, against each other, I get 64.4 millimeters and I round that up to the nearest millimeters to get 65. Okay. So now that we're done with step number five, we can move on to step number six. Under step number six, we identified the two widths that we calculated, the one for one person, the one for all people, and we have to pick the larger one of the two values. So between these two, which one is the larger one? It's 1,100 millimeters which is actually going to be then our final answer. The minimum width for the exit stairs for this floor plan, so that's an office building, uh, five stories, measuring 13 meters by 10 meters, is 1,100 millimeters for each exit stairs. You got this.